Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have now the lineup for traditional canoe, Yapis canoe paddlers for their race, 200 meter. For lane one, closest to shore, paddler, Hermino. Lane two, in the middle, paddler, Adrian. Lane three, far out, paddler, Lorenzo. They will move from where they are, come out toward the community center, turn around and go back. So we wait for the 
start. Gunfire and off they go for 200 meters. Lane one, Hermino. Lane two, Lorenzo now. Lane three, far out, Adrian. Give it to them, ladies and gentlemen. Here they come for the 200 meters. Hard paddling these canoes, but here they are, turning. Lane one is making his turn now. Followed by lane two. Lane one is catching up to lane two now. <laughs> lane two just finishing off, followed by lane one. Lane one, here we know, now coming for the finish. Give it up for the boys, for the paddlers, ladies and gentlemen. The yellow canoe. Once you're on in position, drop your, I mean, uh, let go of your sail and wait for the gun to fire. And the canoes are off. These are the uh, mid-sized canoes going for the race. Four teams are Team Vargi and three other teams from Larry. Some fair wind catching all the four canoes racing out. <laughs> Team Larry is uh, trailing with the uh, round sail. What do you want to do with this boy?
Gentlemen, it's coming in to the finish line. Double boys, Totang race. Third lane, canoe, Totang. Team Blue. Okay, the canoes are coming up to the finish line. Uh, the first two are now approaching the finish line. Uh, a few meters away from the finish line, we have uh, the team. The larger canoe is being washed out from the top. Tip the mill to the finish line to shore. Lowering their sail. Give it up for our team from Tamil, ladies and gentlemen. Team Jerry and the mill team. Gong. Wind coming from behind sail for Team Larry. They might lose the sail. But no, here comes another good wind for them. In the meantime, TNS is about to cross the finish line. Team Larry tagging, showing off their skills, and they are about to lose the sail. No, they didn't. <laughs> 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 Give it up for Team Larry, came in second. The 500 meter international pilot is now on the way. Okay, this is a very important announcement to everybody. Please, please make sure you don't throw trash trash into the ocean, into the water, please. Okay. Oh, Oh, Okay. These are the two ocean going canoes for our visitors and guests. These two particular canoe, Metomram and, uh, and uh, not Hapil Mall. The Tomram and uh, Hukleya uh, were the two canoes that made the long distance voyage from Yap to Palau. Uh, last year they made the voyage. The two large canoes will be in position. They will raise their sail, make a tag, head toward the bridge, and then their final tag out to the channel. And the race will start. And now they're tossing down their uh, rudder, both canoes, about the same time, doing the same moves. Hukulea now, 
turning itself towards uh, adjusting to the channel so it's Matamaram Both canoes are now ready to hoist sail and uh, start their final for the uh, large canoes, large foraging canoes. And the gun fired for the two large canoes. Oh, 
And the race will start. Team MAP is uh, closest to the community center now. They're just making their attack to head in. Team TNS is lowering their sail and is in position. Team MAP will go in, they will lower sail. And then on the counter, demonstrate how this big canoe can be afloat. And then they will capsize it and uh, turn it over right side up again to demonstrate that skill. As you can see, they took their mast and take it out to the outrigger and put more weight there. What they're going to attempt to do now is to turn that canoe. They're now crawling up on the mast and pushing it down. You can see the hull of the canoe coming up. That is a technique of basically offloading the water in, that, in the hull of that canoe. And now they throw it back up and the canoe is afloat. Give him, give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. The quickest way to get the canoe. Quickest way of getting the canoe afloat was to take the mast out to the outrigger, put some weight on there, and the water just come right out. Second attempt, trying to turn that canoe, to turn it upside down or flip it upside down. So body weight now heading out to the outrigger and giving it more weight to see if they can flip the outrigger. And the outrigger is slowly going, and the canoe is about to be capsized, folks, and it did. Give them a Our ancestors knew best when they designed these canoes because you have to expect with strong wind, your canoe will be capsized. If you don't know how to flip it back up, you're in trouble. Normally, you don't do that. The canoe will be capsized on their own with strong winds. But because they have to demonstrate they have to flip it over. It's hard for body weight to flip that canoe if they were to be on the leeward side of it. So they apply pressure and weight on the outrigger so that the canoe can be capsized. The next move that you will witness is essentially the reverse of what they just showed you. They will again put the, the mast out on the outrigger and apply weight, push the outrigger back down into the water and up from the other side and there you will have a right side up canoe. But there are skills applied to this. They have to take all the ropes, there are certain ropes that will have to be tied to the mast and positioned well on the canoe before they can flip it right side up. The uh, mast is uh, floating at the moment but once they have all their strings, the mast will then be standing up from the outrigger. The outrigger part, they will have the mast standing there. And again, the body weight will be pushing the outrigger. So once they have all their ropes in position, every one of them is going to go start climbing that mast on the outrigger and push it back down. In a real voyaging canoe that, let's say, voyage between Yap and Palau, and they come into a storm and their canoe got capsized, as you see, and suppose they're carrying uh, children and uh, women on board, usually the captain would uh, know how light the outrigger would be and how many men person would take to uplift or to flip the canoe back up. If it requires more weight, they will take as many weight as possible so the women on board 
will also be assisting in climbing that uh, mast. The captain might see this as the safest way of, of uh, protecting the canoe, therefore flipping it over to weather out the storm before they can flip it back up. Now what you see is the lines are now in position and so the outrigger is going to be the key to this whole process. So they're putting up the mast from the outrigger side and eventually they're going to have all the body weights climbing up that mast and, and uh, flipping the canoe right side up. There are some problem with the mast, but uh, it looks like they uh, want to fix that. So slowly they are now applying a little weight and slowly climbing, climbing the mast. Iris, Iris, Larry's wife, Iris, you're needed at the headquarters. <laughs> go! Boost them up. Go! Boost them up. Go! It's go! almost. Go! Outrigger going down. Almost, almost. Oh, came back. Still in. Still in position, they just need more. Ini <laughs> kumpul. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. 
And it's fired off and they go. Go red, go red! Lane three with the blue totem taking the lead. Followed by lane two. The white corrugated iron totem. The boys are just going at it. We are told that we have two of the Sononos have uh, finished, crossed the finish line. Both of them from Tilvavnao School. For your information today, Yap made world news in the BBC News that carries this event and the revival of the traditional skills of, skills of canoe building and canoe navigation by the stars. Congratulations to all the TNS to all the Yapis people for reviving these very important skills. World News BBC carried an article, long article today for the state of Yap. This is a big thing for us. We shall improve on it next year. I said, uh, maybe a part of Paramo or Hyper. 